Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a hospital pharmacist and today let's talk about common calculations that hospital pharmacists have to do. So I get a lot of questions about math, calculations, equations that pharmacists commonly use. So I think this video will be very, very helpful for pharmacy students or people interested in pharmacy or even just new pharmacists that want to transition over to hospital pharmacy. So as a hospital pharmacist, we have an annual competency for our math calculations every year. Make sure that we're up to date on how we do our calculations, utilize equations, and that we're just overall competent as pharmacists every year. It's one of the things that my hospital makes sure to do to make sure that we're up to date. So today I'm going to show you some example calculations and equations that we use. I'm not going to go into vancomycin. That's a whole nother beast, a whole nother video, a lot more complicated. Um, I'm just gonna go over really basic math that almost everyday pharmacists will use. Conversions, conversions, conversion. You need to be able to convert between different doses. So going from milligrams to grams, liters to milliliters, micrograms to grams, things like that. It's important to be able to convert and use a conversion table. Another common uh, question or math calculation is, you know, reconstituting medications, figuring out how much to add to the vial, the drug, how much to take out to get the dose that we need and how much you need to QS the bag. Okay, so here's an example. You have four orders of Cefazolin 2 gram IV piggyback in 100 ml in normal ceiling. You have Cefazolin injection 10 grams pharmacy bulk vial on hand. You see the following information in the package insert. So the first question is, how many milliliters of diluent is required to get a concentration of cefazolin 1000 milligrams over 5 ml? So this should be very simple, very basic. Looking at that reference photo, you can see to get the 1 gram over 5 ml, you need 45 ml of diluent. Essentially, not even math. Being able to read and follow instructions, that's really important. Because oftentimes when we have to compound things, we're going off of the package insert, the instructions on the manual. So being able to understand these references is important. Next question is, how many mLs do you need to compound each order? So looking at the question, each order is 2 grams. So 2 grams divided by 1 gram times by 5 mL, you get 10 mLs. So that means you need to draw 10 mLs to get 2 grams. Now there's something called the 10% rule, which is important to know as a hospital pharmacist, especially for compounding IV medications. So generally for the 10% rule, it means that the volume of the additive medication is more than 10% of the total bag. Some fluid may need to be removed to ensure the correct final concentration of the bag. So let's say you have a 100 mL bag. So 10% of that is 10 mL, right? but the amount of drug you need to add is 15 mLs. So that exceeds the 10%. So that means before you inject 15 mLs into that bag, you have to take out 15 mLs so that the total bag is still 100 mLs. But let's say um, the drug is only 9 mLs and it's a 100 mL bag. You don't need to remove 9 mLs before you inject it in because it's under 10%. Here's another example. So a patient is ordered the following epidural. Bupivacaine 300 milligrams and fentanyl 500 micrograms in 250 ml of NS. Pharmacy stocks bupivacaine 0.75 PF vials and fentanyl 50 micrograms per ml PF vials. PF means preservative free. So the first question is, what volume of bupivacaine and fentanyl must be injected into the bag? So here you just do a simple conversion. So let's see, your dose that you want divided by the vial. So essentially the 0.75% vial equals to 750 milligrams per 100 mLs. So with this, it'll help you find that you'll need 40 mLs of bupivacaine. Now for the fentanyl, that one's a little bit more straightforward. So the dose you want is 500 micrograms and you divide it by 50 micrograms per ml of that vial, and you get 10 ml of fentanyl. One math example that's a little bit more complicated is uh, titrations. 
So oftentimes patients in the hospital, they might get some allergy testing done. So we need to compound different concentrations of the same drug so that um, you know they can test the patient slowly, introduce them to the medication to test their tolerance. In the pharmacy, we're stocked with Steptraxone, 250 milligrams per 2.5 ml vials. So that's about 100 ml or 100 milligrams per ml. And so you need to outline what you would do to compound and make get this concentration. So what you can do is draw up one ml of the 100 mg per ml into a 10 cc syringe. Draw up nine cc's of NS into the same syringe to make a final concentration of 10 mg per ml solution. Now you attach that syringe to a syringe transfer device and transfer 0.5 ml to a smaller 1 cc syringe. And that's your final product for the first one. Now we gotta make the other one. And from the same syringe to syringe transfer device, transfer 0.1 ml of the 10 mg per ml solution to a 1 cc syringe. Draw up 0.9 ml of NS to the same syringe to get 1 mg per ml solution. Attach that syringe to a syringe transfer device and transfer 0.5 ml into a 1 cc syringe. And this is the final product for the second concentration. So this one's a little bit more complicated. You really have to figure out what equipment you would need, like a fluid transfer device, how many syringes, um, things like that. And of course, it's really important that you're able to do basic calculations like calculating cranial clearance. So many, many medications are adjusted based off cranial clearance, so the patient's kidney function. So you need to have calculation memorized on your head um, that's why most hospital pharmacists have a calculator on hand. Um, we either find you know, a calculator online or we just punch it in our calculators on the spot. Um, so that's really important to do. Also, in addition to that, being able to calculate ideal body weight and adjusted body weight because many medications are dosed by body weight, right? Um, but oftentimes, it's not always the actual body weight. Sometimes very specific antibiotics or specific medications is dosed by ideal body weights. Um, and then if a patient's very obese, then most of the times the preferred is to use adjusted body weight. So those are just some common math equations that I can think of. Some of them are very simple. Once you get used to it, it's very straightforward. Um, the more complicated ones are, like I said, vancomycin. That's a whole nother beast to go over. And dosing TPN is also very or complicated as well, which would require its own video. But these are just some basic pharmacist equations and calculations um, I wanted to show you guys that we would see day to day that I think it's very important to know.